We come together now for our world healing prayer. Just coming into that quietness of the heart, letting go of all the turmoils of the outer world and perhaps of our own thoughts, putting aside all sense of disruption into the great peace, the quiet. So let us remember the great need of our world as we seek to still our mind so that we come into a place of peace and deep stillness, drawing closer to God in prayer. So let us open our hearts to the power, love, and wisdom of God. By the Christ light and love in our hearts, we call to the great angels of the Christ star circle. Being still, we feel their presence and their power. And now with all the will of our minds, with all the love of our deepest hearts, we send forth the light. We send it forth as a great star of light, a blazing star, a star lifting all hearts into the eternal heart of God. By all the power of Christ, the light within our hearts, we send forth the light to the world. We hold our beautiful planet in the healing light of the Christ star, and we hold within this healing ray the soil, the waters of the earth and the air, and all of nature, especially the human and the animal kingdoms. We hold in the heart of the Christ star the soul of the Americas, the soul of the people and the leaders, especially of the Americas. May the light of the Christ star shine through the hearts and the minds of all the people of the Americas, all the nations that make up the Americas, North, Central, and South, to bring healing to mankind and a renewed reverence for all of life. Let us hold within this great healing star now anyone known to us personally who may be in need of help or healing. Silently we name them now and see them radiant within this beautiful healing light. And we thank you, Lord, for your presence and the blessing of your healing grace. Upon these, your family. Amen. 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 Let us open our hearts to the Christ power wisdom, and love, as together we call upon the angels of healing to draw close. We come into the soft radiance of this love as we focus and hold the healing light of the Christ star over all the world. With hearts full of love and gratitude, we give our grateful thanks. Amen. The reading this morning from White Eagle um, is, I believe, a very powerful one. This happens to be my first time of giving a reading, and I've been blessed with a very powerful message from White Eagle, and it's my pleasure to be able to read it to you this morning. 
life, my brethren, is in continual movement. Human life moves in a spiral, or as some of you are aware, in cycles. There have been golden ages on earth, and in those days, angels have walked with men and women. Some of you here have known more beautiful lives than this one of today. You are here once again to lead, to inspire, to help your brother man, and not to condemn or criticize or hurt him or her, nor to injure any form of life but to rejoice in the beauty of the world, to rejoice in the love you find in your fellows, and to realize there is no man or woman who will not respond to your own love. In every soul is the same fire or divine spark. It may be covered and smothered by heaviness. It is your work to penetrate these layers, to find the spark in your brother and sister, no matter in what circumstances or social condition that you find them. Give out love and light, my brethren, and you will find that you are drawing aside the veil between earth and heaven. You will find your way into the spheres of angelic life. The veil between physical matter and the spiritual will grow very thin so that you can penetrate it and see at any time the heavenly life. <clears throat> Do not say, oh, that is too far off. No, it is waiting here and now for you. We would direct your thoughts to the miracle of the spiritual nature, the possibility of this spiritual unfoldment in mankind. We wish that we could find words with which to describe the glory which can be attained by a master soul. We can give you perhaps an inkling of that glory by describing this form as like a jewel. So think of a jewel casket. Then open your casket and lying upon a cushion, see a golden jewel flashing like fire, dazzlingly beautiful. See how the rays from this jewel go in all directions, high and broad and deep. Conceive in your mind's eye this most perfect flashing jewel. From this, try to get some idea of the glory of a master soul. Afterwards, keep this ideal ever before you, remembering that you, in spite of your limitations and your failures, have been created to become that glorious jewel someday. For as a bulb grows in the dark and eventually becomes a flower, so every human soul contains within its being the potentialities of becoming a master soul. This truth has been taught from the beginning. From the beginning of time, Teachers came to tell the incarnated souls of man the way to grow to perfection. 
the ideal of the Godhead was thus planted within every human soul. By this we mean the divine spark breathed forth from the heart of God to journey into the depths of material life, the soil in which to grow. Such teachers came and taught the people their method of soul building. Their school was called the Mystery School, where pupils were instructed how to build up the soul which God had implanted in them. To this end, all life's experiences, every contact with physical life is important, is necessary, because through such contact with the difficulties does the spirit, the divine spark, teach the soul how to build. This is a part of the ancient wisdom, the fundamental teaching of which there are many different facets as in that perfect jewel. These things are not imaginary. They are reality. This world of yours is the shadow. When the veil is gone and you will behold your true home, the state of life to which you are all moving forwards, no man or woman can reach that heaven until he or she has learned to love. Just to love. Only the love first to give out love. Then the soul rises on wings to planes of knowledge and learns how to use wisely the power which comes as a result of the love which it has learned to give forth. So, beloved, may you receive here and now a great outpouring of the angelic love. Try on every occasion to be aware of your angelic guide or your guardian angel. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find knowledge. Knock and the door of the heavenly glories will be open unto you and all the world. Peace, my brethren. Peace be with you. Good morning. We seem to have difficulty singing this morning, <laughs> which reminds me that perhaps when we begin our incarnations, it's a real struggle, and gradually we get the note going, and we can truly sing. So, but we keep trying, don't we? So, bless us all. David, I must tell you that I've known that reading for years, and I have never heard it, first of all, so beautifully read but also to find segments in it that I'd never really absorbed. So thank you. Beautifully, beautifully done. So I suppose we look at this extraordinary life we're all living. A powerful weekend. Celebration of the Buddhist festival of Wesak. I've given to understanding at this time that a great blessing is bestowed on humanity the coronation of Britain's new monarch, not to mention the full moon eclipse, and we're all still standing. This is good. 
So much continues to happen at high speed, doesn't it, in every one of our lives. We've all got hurdles, perhaps not known by somebody else. We've all got things we're overcoming. And the brilliance of it all is that not only do we keep on going, but the extraordinary courage that helps us keep on going is there. And that flame, that divine spark that ignites the hearts of all of us help us keep going. And that's the wonderful thing about a group that shares rather as a family. We all know a little of one another's journey and we can all appreciate the toughness. And we also know that that very vulnerability that often comes to us, and I know me personally, and you just get to a point where you have to find new ways of life and of living. And it's okay. It's okay. Because through that very vulnerability, one finds renewed strength. So bless you all. And while we're in the blessing mode, I must thank you, Danny, for the most wonderful rendition in Much Ado About Nothing, the play that was recently in Conroe. Uh, a great lot of work goes into those productions of which the audience perhaps is totally unaware. So thank you. All right. So we may ask, what is it that's going on and why at this time does there seem to be such a huge push to go forward. We'd say the door perhaps is opening a little wider in order to manifest this, and we're given renewed opportunity, regardless of the toughness of those tests, to move forward into a more beautiful and perfect way of life. As made clear in our reading, the veil between the inner worlds and our own physical world grows very thin at this time, which simply means that we have a perception, don't we, of seeing a little further into our inner selves rather than just thinking this world is what life is, which is far from true. We move away from the old ways and watch the breakdown of those old ways, forging our way into an entirely new era. There are huge barriers to break down, both in ourselves and those affecting the mass collective consciousness of which we're a part. Helpful to remember that we're part of the karma of our little world, the sowing and the reaping that's made up this world. We've helped form it. So now we have the opportunity and the great privilege to help transmute it as we sow the good seed on the land in that old hymn. I remember singing as a child as we sow that good seed on the land. We're told that this is a way of life that is awaiting us now, here and now, here and now. So what is there to be doing? And I quote from the reading, No man or woman can reach that heaven until he or she has learned to love, just to love, only to love first, to give out love, and then the soul is able to rise on wings to planes of knowledge and learns how to use wisely the power which comes as a result of that learning to love which they have given forth. That's a very simple directive, and yet a razor's edge of a path towards which each one of us must learn to walk. We're drawn together as a family. Some of you are drawn here because you've recognized this to be your particular path in life. Others are drawn because they know there is some aspect of truth they wish to find, and then they move on with that gem of truth. And some of you are drawn here because of that deep sense of family, and somehow you know you belong. All are welcome because actually we are a family, and learning to form, we might say, a prototype for what must come eventually to the earth. When the world's humanity recognizes that it is a family, that every other person of every nation has this same implanted spark and glorious divine light in them, and we can love them and not be afraid of them. I think it begins in small circles such as this, where trust grows and understanding grows, and we look at the individual rather than what's uh, perhaps broadcast in the outer world. The vision that directs this lodge of the White Eagle is a vision for the whole earth, and it comes in form 
of that mission that was given to bring to the earth a standard of life in harmony with the infinite love and to shepherd humanity into the coming age, providing a school of teaching. In its full expression, it means that each one of us strive to conduct our lives with this understanding present in our consciousness. That's a toughie, to ever be present and conscious of exactly how we should live without coming across as a very solemn and uh, rigorous person. Loving doesn't mean necessarily getting gooey over each other, although that has its place too. Loving means sympathy, patience, and tolerance of each other's shortcomings, allowing each other to live according to the beliefs that are held dear in their hearts, as well as honoring our own at the same time. So many ask, then, how is this idealistic world to actually take form? Could we say it's a hearing of the word, something we know to be absolutely true, truth, and then having the courage to walk that path that it's been indicated to us? We don't proselytize and tell people what to be believing or thinking. Perhaps the very best way to share our thoughts and our beliefs and to help each other along is to try and live by example, just doing our very best. Should we meet one of the great masters, all of us would be aware of the great love beyond our human comprehension and a deep humility that would flow from them and a feeling that it is to this essence that each one of us would aspire. A book of spiritual instruction, whatever book, however wonderful it is, can never hold the light as that which lives in the heart of a truly loving soul, a master soul. The theory is easy. Living it is a little more complex, as we know. We all get worked up about details, trying to make things happen as we, according to our earthly mind, seems right, instead of just allowing things to flow. Getting the small self, which ever protests, out of the way, and allowing God's great plan to flow unimpeded. So what is that plan? Could we simplify it right down to a grain and say, it's recognizing of that most beautiful and exquisite Christ self, both inside ourselves and everyone else. A very insightful soul, a man called Ira Sandpearl, wrote the following. We are a funny mixed up people, living very f briefly in a very funny mixed up world. It is a joy often a sorrow, but fundamentally it is a joy. Yet although we know life is a joy, it is at last very difficult for multitudes of people. But it is changing, and the struggle is on. And for the first time in history, we have all the tools for worldwide well-being. And the greatest of these tools is what Gandhi called Satyagraha, soul force, or true force, truth force. We must learn how to develop and use these tools, he says, and become ever more skillfully sensitive craftsmen. I love that, skillfully sensitive craftsmen. And those of you who work in wood, like Doug and Alva, there is no slipshod way. Everything is done very carefully and beautifully. We look at some of the work of Alva, these podiums and the beautiful star that Doug created where Diane sits, all requiring, requiring time and precision. Skillfully sensitive craftsmen. Perhaps we all need to re just remember that, that we ourselves are crafting ourselves. We're crafting that beautiful um, ideal of the master soul within ourself, perhaps unknowingly, but very carefully, and with infinite patience of ourself. And I think our teacher would add, remember our loved family, 
that upon you and your life and your reactions to the conditions in the world and in your own life rests the responsibility of all the rest of mankind. Each of us doing our very best for every other. So let us go now as we prepare for our communion. We stand in the presence of the great powers of the spiritual realms. May we absorb the love which is pouring upon us. May we not keep this to ourselves. May it not die in us. May we go forth to give unto suffering humanity the love and the healing power, all the healing power that we ourselves have received. And so there comes within our midst that image of the light in form called the Christ love, the Christ essence, the Christ presence, but truly the presence of the union of the father-mother, the Christ. It is, in a sense, within us that holy grail a part of our self deep in the heart where we receive all this outpouring of loving care, the sweetness of the divine family. And so it is we see the master presence raises the gifts of spirit, the gift of the bread, and the light pours into it and then offered to each one of us to take and to absorb. And then from his heart, the grail cup filled with the wine of spirit, the pure elixir of spirit, which is pure love. We may take and drink deeply. Absorb the light. And so let us give thanks for all the gifts we have received all that we need to move forward and to bless every living creature, every form of life. That the Christ love this we give our grateful thanks. Amen. Amen.